friends! Today we're doing a Q&A because guess what? We reached 1k subscribers! Yay! Thank you so much for always watching my videos, commenting. To celebrate this, I thought we could do a little Q&A. I asked over on my Instagram account and also my YouTube community board what you want to know if you have any questions regarding Japanese, my life, whatever. And you submitted quite a lot of questions, so thank you for that. I categorized them into two different categories. One is Japan, Japanese language learning and the other one is my personal life. I will start with Japan and Japanese. I have all the questions on my phone so I will look down quite a lot to read them and the first question is is there a specific reason or goal as to why you're studying Japanese? When I was four I watched a documentary about Japanese culture and the Hina Matsuri festival. I got really interested in it because I was a little girl and there were little girls getting dolls as presents. I also saw a lot of temples and it got me really interested. Later I watched a girl on YouTube that did an exchange year in a Japanese high school and I wanted to do this myself but I wasn't allowed to by my parents. So I thought okay the best thing I could do is to learn Japanese for myself. So I started learning Japanese at the age of like 14 or 15, but only for a summer in my summer break. And then I abandoned it. I just started back in uni in my last year after I went to Japan and I discovered how nice everyone was and I liked the country even more than I thought I would. Quite a few Japanese people tried to talk to me in English and they were really happy when I was just like, oh, arigato gozaimasu, like only basic stuff. And they were so happy that I, as a white person, was able to speak a little bit of Japanese. So I thought to myself, okay, the next time I'm going to Japan, I really want to be able to speak Japanese, to have like a little conversation with the cashier or with someone on the train who's interested in like German culture or whatever. What are your Japanese language learning goals? What are your personal targets for grammar, kanji, career, etc.? So my Japanese language learning goal is actually I really want to be able to communicate. I also like manga, anime quite a lot. So I would like to read and watch them in Japanese as well and also read like Japanese books. My personal targets for grammar well, to acquire the grammar I need to communicate effectively and to understand 80 to 90 percent of the things I hear on a daily basis when I'm immersing in Japanese would be ideal. My goal for kanji, it's quite the same, so I'm not really eager to learn all 2000 something kanji you need to read the newspaper, but so many that I can get by and that I can understand most of the things that I don't have to look everything up so often. How is speaking going? I just got an italki tutor about a month ago. I was quite afraid before I talked to her. I feel like I improved quite a bit at least in my ability to just speak what's on my mind and not to be so frightened like a deer in the headlights being like uh, I don't know what to say or how to say it <laughs> because this was the problem before when I tried to speak and I also took part in the target language speaking club that you will actually see in my next vlog and this also helps because most of the people that take part are around the N4, 2 and 5 level and everyone is quite at the beginning stages of speaking. So I also see that I'm not the only one that struggles with speaking. So I'm getting more comfortable with speaking day by day. How do you structure your learning? Well, first of all, I try to think about what I want to achieve. Right now it's to prepare for language school. So that means getting my listening and my speaking level at the same level that my grammar is because I know a lot of grammar, but I'm not really able to use it when I'm doing output because I just don't think of it. Like, it's just like it isn't there in my brain at the moment. And then I also set yearly goals for myself. One of them was, for example, to have a five-minute conversation in Japanese without needing to stop. And then I also have my weekly study planner. And there I will write down, like, what skills I want to study. And for each skill I will write down a few tasks I want to do so that I know, okay, this is roughly what I want to achieve in one week and I don't feel lost when I have time to sit down for a study session because I can just look at my planner and be like okay reading I did almost everything speaking as well but I need to do a lot more grammar so grammar is today and this really helps to be more structured and not to sit there five minutes and think hmm what should I do? The next question is how do you stay motivated to learn Japanese? 
but actually I made a video on that topic and I will link it on the top and also put it in the end cards. My biggest thing is actually to know my reason why, like why I want to study Japanese and just remind myself when I don't feel like it, okay, I want to go to a language school, for example, next year and I want to be really prepared so that I don't feel as overwhelmed when I am there. So this is right now my motivation and I just really like the language. Like I feel kind of at home in the language, even though I'm not that good at it. <laughs> but I just like the sounds, I like kanji, I like just everything about it. I love Japanese culture, so I don't really need a lot of motivation because if I don't do it, I feel like kind of not complete, which is a bit weird maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it just became part of me. How do you deal with moments when language learning just feels overwhelming? For example, too many reviews. I am actually in the stage right now where language learning feels a bit overwhelming. It depends on what your circumstances are. For me, I don't have a lot of pressure to study. It's all something I decided for myself. So I don't really have a deadline right now because I'm not taking the JPT, for example. And if I feel like it's getting overwhelming, for example, with my Anki cards, I didn't do them in October for like one or two weeks and I had like over a thousand reviews. I just told myself, okay, I will not try to learn any new cards until I get the reviews down. So I just lowered my expectation for myself to learn new things. I know if you study like Japanese, for example, in uni or you want to take the JLPT, then you can't really say, okay, I'm just doing less. Try to focus on the things that propel you forward the most because sometimes we focus on the tasks that just make us feel productive, but that don't really take us far. For example, just studying vocabulary without context is something that makes us feel productive, but it doesn't really help that the vocabulary sticks in our brain compared to if we learn vocabulary in context, for example, like in an example sentence. So trying to focus more on the things that give you more output and then maybe try to spend less time because you're more effective with doing the things that give you more output. I hope this was helpful. And if not, or if you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments below and I can make a separate video about it. Open question. How do you know you've studied enough? This is quite difficult, to be honest. Let me think about it. I think I will stick to my first impulse of saying there is no enough because in language learning there is no done. Like you could study forever and you would always find something that you didn't know, maybe like proverb, a combination of words you never thought of using. I think the biggest challenge is to get comfortable with not knowing everything and feeling like you didn't do enough, for example, when it comes to preparing for a test and just be content with what you did and trust in your ability that if there's something you don't know or you won't understand, you will still get through it, like you won't die. You can just guess or try to gauge the meaning from the whole sentence. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that. And since this is a very, very interesting question, please also let me know in the comments below what you think about that question and what your opinion is. I would love to open a discussion about what is enough, is there enough? So let me know. The best resource you would recommend to everyone? I think it would be YouTube, actually. I think everyone would find something they would be happy with because it's free to watch. You have tons of different videos. There's new content coming out like every second. There are grammar videos, kanji videos, videos for all skills, things to immerse yourself in. And some vlogs and podcasts have even Japanese subtitles. So yeah, I would stick to YouTube. What's your favorite thing about Japanese? It's actually kanji, because I really like writing kanji and it feels like drawing to me, like doing something creative. And it's also kind of exciting because it's like you are practicing a secret language that not everyone can read. Your favorite book you've read in Japanese? I don't know if you would count it as a book, but it's a manga. And it's the Oji-sama to Neko. I don't think I showed it a lot on this channel, but I wrote a review about it on Instagram. And it's a really heartwarming manga about an old man that adopts a cat from a shelter. The cat really felt like it was unworthy and unloved before and he gives it so much love. And it's just so cute to see those two 
be together and get to know each other. And also the drawing style is really nice. I think it's so cute and it made me laugh like quite a lot. And it also made me tear up quite a lot. So I can only recommend this one. And when it comes to books without pictures like real novels, I didn't really read that many and I wasn't so impressed by the ones I read. But this is also because my understanding of the book I read was not that great, so I wasn't able to get everything from it that the author was trying to give. What Anki decks are you using in your videos? I'm actually using Anki decks I made myself. Most of my Anki cards are from the Genki books. I have a vocabulary deck and I also have a grammar deck. And for the grammar deck, I use the example sentences from the grammar sections of the Genki books and put them into Anki, wrote a bit of an explanation, like how the grammar point is built and why it's used that way. Other than that, I also have one deck for every book I used for preparing for the JLPT. I never downloaded an Anki deck from someone else. I only use the ones I made myself because I think by making the cards you learn so much because I have to see what example sentence do I want to use, what picture do I want to use. I can just tailor make it for myself and by doing that I have a lot more exposure to the word than if I would just download a pre-made deck and see the word for the first time like in the deck. Why don't you just immerse? This is actually a question I got on my stream yesterday and it's a really interesting question because I feel like studying a language as you would do in school is being frowned upon on quite a lot and immersion is the new holy grail. I like to do a combination of those two because I don't think like either one standing alone is suitable at least for me. Of course everyone has their own preferences and other things work for other people. I only do it in conjunction and I really like to study like JLPT material for example and then I try to find the things I study in the immersion material I'm immersing in. This helps me to consolidate my knowledge I gained before, but only seeing it in immersion material I don't think I would feel comfortable, especially with grammar, I wouldn't know like how to properly use it. Of course you will get the hang of it after months or years of immersing, but I think getting to the point I want to with my Japanese and only doing immersion would take so much more time than if I would do the combination of the two. Did you prefer the Nihongo Challenge vocabulary book or the Tango vocabulary book? I think of getting one or the Shinkansen Master vocab book for and for study. I actually haven't used the Tango book until now. I just bought it in case I want to start studying for the N3. I would like to start using it soon, but I don't really have time now for using books. I'm just studying on the go most of the time. But I hope with doing the study streams that I will have more time again to sit down and use my books. The Tango book is just like a table with a lot of different words and you don't really have a lot of context. With the Nihongo challenge book you at least have a few sentences that actually use the words that you're going to learn. So it depends on what you want. I think the Nihongo challenge book is good for like starting to learn those things and the Tango book is nice for checking if you got everything right or if you know every word you might need for the N4. Which app are you using to track your study time? Until the middle of the year I used Toggle Track. I found it to be a bit clunky and not as beautiful and to change the colors to pastel tones you had to pay and I wasn't really a big fan of that because I didn't need all the other functions. So now I use the Hero Hunter tracker. I think it's a Korean tracker. It has a lot of pastel colors, like you can choose every color you want from a color wheel even, I think. You don't have to pay and there's like a planner feature where you can see like when you studied what. You can have a lot of like statistics from different things and how you studied like today compared to yesterday, for example. I really like using it. It's really pretty and yeah, I can only recommend it. What languages are on your polyglot wishlist? Right now I'm really content with only studying Japanese because it's taking a lot of brain power for me as a native German speaker and I'm only interested in 
Asian languages so far, and those are of course a bit harder to learn. But I promised my boyfriend that I will study Vietnamese at some point. I hope to get into it more next year. His parents are from Vietnam and it's a bit hard sometimes to communicate in German. So I also want to go the extra mile and also learn a bit of Vietnamese so that I can communicate more with his parents and also his grandparents, they don't speak German at all. And this is a language I would have a use for, so it makes sense to study. There are two more languages I'm quite interested in. The first one is Korean, but not because I'm really interested in Korean culture. I just like the script, so I'm not sure how useful it would be to study a language, but maybe I will do it for fun. The other one is Thai, because I just traveled to Thailand for a second time in summer. I think the people are just so friendly and nice, and I would also love to communicate at least a bit. Not to the extent I want to do with Japanese, but just to be able to exchange a few like basic phrases when I'm traveling in Thailand. And also a couple of years ago, I wanted to study Portuguese. This is only because I watched the Netflix show and I really like the singing parts of the show, but I have no reason for studying Portuguese, so I don't think I will study it. Also let me know what languages you want to study in the future. Could you read the first page of Das Parfüm or Die Leiden des Jungen Bertas? Would you tell us more about German language since I'm learning German on my own? Ja, naja, ich weiß ehrlich gesagt nicht, ob alle Leute daran interessiert sind, mich auf Deutsch reden zu hören. Ich würde ungern jemandem deutsche Grammatik beibringen wollen. Ich meine, ich bin auch nur ein Muttersprachler und ich kenne mich jetzt nicht so 100% mit den Grammatikregeln aus. Da würde ich mich nicht so comfortable mitfühlen. Aber ich kann dir den Gefallen tun. Ich lese dir drei Sätze vor von Die Leiden des jungen Werters. Am 4. Mai 1771. Wie froh bin ich, dass ich weg bin. Bester Freund, was ist das Herz des Menschen? Dich zu verlassen den ich so liebe, von dem ich unzertrennlich war und froh zu sein. Difficult German. So, ich hoffe, du bist zufrieden damit. So let me know if you want me to speak German more in my videos. Can you make a video on how to start a Studygram channel on Instagram? She also sent me a few more questions on what she would like to know. So I will just answer them really quickly. What kind of account do I need? Normal business or creator? I think there's no rule for this, like which one interests you the most. I think I have the creator one. How often should I post to gain followers? I discovered for myself if I post less than three or four times a week I don't really gain a lot of followers and my posts don't really get a lot of likes. But right now it's not my top priority and I'm just posting when I want to, when I have something to say. Only fixating on followers is not the best approach to take because you can burn out quite quickly and be upset if one post doesn't really perform as well. So try to focus on what you want to share, what you want to communicate to the world. Is it necessary to show my face? Not at all. I don't think I share my face on Instagram a lot. I think most of the people probably only saw my face once I started YouTube. No one really asked. I also saw survey results from someone asking on Instagram if they want to see their face or if they don't care. 70% said they don't care, so I don't think you have to if you feel uncomfortable. Showing your face might help to create a bond with your followers because they feel like they know you better because they at least know like how you look. Does it make sense to only show my language learning or would it be okay to show my other studies as well? such as psychology, for example. You could show everything you want to. I think there are also a lot of Studygram accounts that like focus on, for example, medicine. So do what makes you happy, because it doesn't make sense to say I will only post things about Japanese and it's not really natural for you to post like five times a week about Japanese. Try to do something that would be sustainable for you in the long run. Is it actually a good way to connect with other language learners? And how does it work? Yeah, it's actually a good way to connect. Comment on someone else's post, share your opinion on their posts, then this might get you talking. In the Japanese learning community, I think the community is very close-knit. And I feel like everyone is following everyone. And a lot of people know each other. And I was also a bit afraid when I started, like, how should I make connections? But I wrote with so many nice people. And I also met like three people in real life. And they were also like really friendly. And I think the Japanese learning community on Instagram is really wonderful. Don't be afraid, just try to approach someone that seems interesting. And I feel like even the ones that have like 10,000 followers, for example, they are still like really down to earth. They will answer your questions most of the 
time. And if you feel down or it doesn't work, then just write me a message. I will respond to you happily. She also said maybe she's too old at 44. I don't think you're too old to start. Like even if you would be like 60 or 70, why should you be too old for doing something you want to do? And who knows, maybe there are a lot of people who are in their 40s or 50s and want to do what you are doing and they might be admiring you then. Just try it. <laughs> you have nothing to lose. What's your progress with language school? Well, actually, I want to go to language school in October and I'm in a bit of a predicament right now because I have a new job. With most jobs in Germany, you have a six month trial period and if you did it, they decide if they want to keep you or if they want to get rid of you. I don't want to risk saying like, hey, I want to go to language school. Uh, is it okay if I go next year? And then lose the job because this is a job I wanted for a really long time and I'm really happy with it. I'm not quite sure what to do. I think I might ask them after my trial period and this is almost the same time period where I should really start to apply for everything. It might be a really close call. So that's my current situation. But nevertheless, I want to look at Japanese language school in December and I already have a video planned, but not recorded yet. And there I will look at everything, see which ones I really like and maybe narrow down the ones that I might go to. So if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe and you can be excited for this video coming up in December. So now we're getting on to private questions. The first question is, are you single? And guess who asked that? My boyfriend. No, babe, I'm not single. Thank you. Do you have a part-time job? No, I actually have a full-time job now, so 40 hours. But I've been working around 50 hours the last weeks because I just want to keep up with the goals they set us at work and don't fall behind. How are you, really? I'm quite good. I think my life really turned around this year and I didn't think that so much would happen at the start of the year because I had kind of given up like halfway through the year of finding another job and now I have one and I'm really happy with it. Also YouTube took off which I didn't think it would so fast. Sometimes I'm a bit stressed because Work is still a bit new for me. The only thing I'm really missing right now is real friends. I don't have really meaningful and deep relationships with them and I would really like to deepen them, but I'm not quite sure how. So this is something I'm struggling a bit with right now, but I'm sure I will figure it out as I go. What are things you are proud of regarding yourself? I'm proud of getting over my shyness. I was really shy when I was in school and I wasn't even able to ask the teacher something I wanted to know. And now I'm doing YouTube videos that everyone can see. I'm also proud of actually managing to finish my university degree, which I will talk about in the next question. And also getting over my mental state. I was quite depressed when I was a teenager. So I'm really happy that I made it through that period of time. What did you study in university and what is your actual job? So I studied ökotrophologie in university. I will put it here in English. It's basically the same word, just pronounced a bit differently. And it's basically nutrition and economics together. I did my bachelor's degree. I didn't really know what to do after my bachelor's degree. Like many other students, a lot of my friends actually did their masters. And then they also think about doing a dissertation because they don't know what to do, what job they should take on. And I think this is really common. So if you're also struggling with it, it's quite normal. I think it's just best to try things out as you go. After university, I did a two year course on like becoming a nutritionist. And then I tried to find jobs where I could work as a nutritionist, but didn't really find a lot. I started working at the gym thinking I would be mostly responsible for the nutrition part of things. But I basically became a personal trainer for like 99% of my work and this wasn't my goal initially. I wasn't really happy with it. So after three months of working there, I tried to find another job, but there wasn't something that suited me or that was near where I lived. So it took me almost one and a half year to find this job I have now. And I work in sales for an environmental friendly company, but I won't say which company because I also want to keep my privacy. 
I'm really happy with how everything turned out and the things I learned at the gym I can also translate into my current work because I sold a lot of memberships at the gym so I have a lot of knowledge about sales so it definitely helped even though it seemed like it wouldn't get me further in life but it actually did so no matter what you're doing it all helps like just try different things out don't be afraid to switch your jobs and I was so afraid of switching my job to the current one I have right now because I thought what if I'm not good at the job what if I get laid off why should I leave my safe job I have now and now I'm so much more happy with the job I have now than with the one I had before so it turned out really well and I also have the question where I want to go with my career so I'm not sure to be honest I only know that I want to do something that leaves a positive impact on this earth right now I'm doing YouTube where I help people study Japanese which is nice and I also work for an environmental friendly company so I actually achieved my career goals and I only want to make so much money that I can live comfortably, travel maybe once or twice a year, get myself a little tiny house in the future and live on a farm with some animals in nature. This would be my ideal dream life, whatever. Those were all the questions. Thank you so much for submitting them and I hope it was somewhat interesting. Let me know your thoughts. And as promised, here is the video on how I stay motivated to study Japanese, so check this out if you're interested in it. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!